Okay, welcome to church, everybody. It's so good to see you online today. Uh, if you're here for the very first time, welcome. It's a privilege and an honour to have you with us this morning. Now, a big shout out to all our campuses that are joining us online today. It is fantastic to have you with us today. Now, how many of you uh, like the monkey bars? I, I, back in the day, uh, as, as a kid at school, the monkey bars were one of my most, my most favourite games ever. Uh, but it's specifically about hanging on the longest on the monkey bars uh, without dropping off. And, and uh, the goal was to hang on no matter what happened, just to keep hanging on. You know, you know what would happen? Your, your palms and your hands would get sweaty and all your friends there with smelly armpits and all those kind of things. And, and you're trying to hang on, but your grip would start to slip a little bit. And, and if you were like me, I was pretty good at hanging on the longest to the monkey bars, and I would try all sorts of things, you know, because it can be a mind game, right? My friends were right beside me there, so I'd start to play a few mind games on them, like, oh, your hands are slipping. Oh, you, you, you should just give up now, just drop off. You don't need to hang on any longer, just come down. See, so hanging on to the monkey bars uh, was all about the survival of the strongest and who could hang on the longest. The game was all about hanging on. And, and I don't know about you in this season that we're currently in or have been in over the past couple of years, but it feels like we've done a lot of hanging on, right? We've been hanging on to get takeaways. We've been hanging on to our dreams. We've been hanging on to getting back to some kind of normal life. Uh, for some, we've been hanging on to God's promises. And see, people say things like, uh, just hang in there. Uh, just keep on going and you'll be okay. See, maybe you're like me and you've heard this saying lately too. And it says this, it says, don't worry, we are all in the same boat. Well, respectfully, can I burst that bubble today and say that that's not completely true because the truth is what we are really saying and that is that we are not all in the same boat, but we are all in the same storm. See, some have jet skis, some have yachts, some have kayaks, and some have surfboards, but then there's some who are just drowning. See, in the past two years, we've all been in the same storm, but not necessarily all in the same boat. There are seasons in life where you and I will be in our own storm, and you're just feeling like you're hanging on, near on drowning, and when you're in that storm, just hanging on is not enough. When you're in a storm, treading water is not enough. When you're in a storm, what you really need to know is that there's something of safety that holds you strong, something that you can have confidence in and trust, something that gives you hope. When the environment is not favourable, this morning we're going to talk about hope. Hebrews 6, verse 18 to 20, it says this, it says, so God has given both his promise and his oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge can have this great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. Verse 19, this hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary where Jesus has already gone in there for us. See, what we place our hope in really matters. Maybe you've tried putting hope in people or, or your jobs or, or your money or even events and you've been left disappointed. See, what is this hope? that is so strong, that is so trustworthy, that can be like an anchor for our lives? Well, what is this hope that will help us to endure and persist and even strengthen us in any storm that we may face in life? Now, Lamentations uh, is a book of the Bible of the Old Testament. It's not one of the most popular books of the Bible, if I'm honest, but, but there's some thoughts on hope there that I would like us to unpack a little bit today. So let me give you the context of, of Lamentations. Um, uh, it, evidence supports that the prophet Jeremiah is the author, and the, the name Lamentation gives us that sense of that this book is, is about a weeping or a lamenting over some sad event. And 
Jeremiah seems to have been a witness to this event, which is the destruction and the invasion of the city of Jerusalem by the Babylonians in 586 BC. Lamentation describes what Jeremiah saw as he walked through the streets. It describes the pain that he sees, the suffering, maybe the isolation, maybe the destruction that he saw. And the pain is evident in Jeremiah's reaction as he describes this terrible condition of the city and its people. See, the story portrays a real life hopeless situation where all hope appears to have been lost. And in the middle of this hopeless situation, uh, something changed for the prophet Jeremiah as he reminds himself. And, and today he reminds us of two things that can change our game and that will restore our hope in God. Let's read Lamentations chapter 3. Verse 21 to 23, it says this. It says, Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for His compassions never fail. They are new every morning, for great is your faithfulness. See, even in the midst of the destruction, Jeremiah remembers his God. He reminds himself about the very nature of the Lord his God and hope begins to rise. Jeremiah says something like this. He says, yet this I call to mind and therefore I have hope. Yet this I call to mind and therefore my expectation is a favourable future under God's direction. The first thing about hope is this, is that hope reminds me of God's great love. And now God has incredibly blessed me with an incredibly beautiful wife and three amazing uh, daughters. Everything in my house is pink or purple, so please pray for me about that. But, but as a father, I have determined that I want my children to know that I love them. See, dads, you're, you're the same as me. Every dad knows this. Like, like you want to do the very best for your children. You want to care for them. You want to clothe them and feed them. Uh, you want the best and to take care of their children because you love them, right? Uh, we do that because we love our children so much. We love them when they use up all the internet data on our package. We, we love them very much when they uh, hold the remote to the TV all of the time. We, we love them so much when they borrow our cars and they bring it back empty. Man, we love our children so much. And see, I determined that when our children were young, that, that I was going to provide the best I, I could for our children because I love them so much. And, and one thing I did was every night as I would tuck them into bed, I would pray for them. And, and as I was walking out the door and turning the light on, every time I would say, I love you. And I keep telling them that every night as I walked out the door, I love you. And what I have learned is this, is that the more I tell them, uh, the more they hear it. The more they hear it, the more they start to believe it. The more I tell them, especially when they've done some dumb stuff during the day, the more they hear in their hearts that I love them. It's not dependent on how good they are or how well they behave. They just know that I love them. The amazing thing was, and it was just, man, it filled my heart. The, the very first time each of our, our beautiful daughters, as I was walking out, I'd say, I love you. Have a great sleep. They would reply, I love you, Dad. What an amazing feeling. What an amazing fulfillment in my heart and the hearts of dads when you hear that. See, the truth is that we know that God loves us. He loves you because John 15, 13 tells us that, that greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. And friends, today, Jesus Christ has laid down his life for you. There's no greater love than that. See, when life is at rock bottom, when you've hit the bottom, God's love reaches out to us no matter what we've done, no matter what we've been, no matter what we've said or who we've uh, hurt, that God's love will reach out to us because His love changes the game. His love helps us to change the direction and the outcome of our lives. See, here's the truth. We know why God loves us. Scripture tells us in 1 John 4 verse 8, it says that God is love. He doesn't just love people but God is love. 
His very nature is love. The essence of everything God does is love. See, love floods His very being and fills all His other qualities, even in His discipline and His anger. I wanna tell you today that God is love. We also know, uh, we know who God loves because Romans 5 verse 8 says this, but God demonstrates His love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, what does that mean? Well, that means that while we were lost, while we were far away from God, while we were in such a mess, while we didn't even know God, that Christ died for us. See, God demonstrated His love for you and I even when we didn't know Him. See, imagine what life could be like as we face, face the relationship in our life that is breaking down. As we go through that conflict within our business and we're having to make tough decisions that affect others. See, imagine the influence of, on people's lives in your school and in your place of, of work and in study. It, it may be a hard situation. It may be a painful situation. But as you talk about the hope that you have in Jesus Christ, you remind yourself and you influence with that very same hope that God is love and that He will hold you safe and secure that hope in Jesus Christ does not depend on the conditions or the environment that we are in. When we have hope in Jesus Christ, it reminds us of His great love for us. This hope, it reminds me of God's great love. Second thing is this, is that hope reminds me of God's great faithfulness. Now, faithfulness uh, is a concept of unfailing loyalty uh, to someone or something and putting that loyalty into consistent practice regardless of the circumstance. Faithfulness in one word is about loyalty. Now I'm a faithful and loyal supporter of one of the greatest rugby teams on the planet that's based down in Hamilton in the Waikato in New Zealand, which is, which is an amazing team. But this one time uh, I was on, on our team in Botany here at that moment and I, I was actually away on, on a missions trip to India and Sri Lanka and, and when a couple of my fellow pastors at that time, who I'll not mention their names, but one started with Tim and one started with Colin, and they, they seemed to break into my office when I was away and redecorated my whole office I was away on the other side of the world serving Jesus and, and, and been on the mission field. And these two were in my office redecorating my office from floor to ceiling, inside my drawers, on my desk, everywhere with their own team's colours. And they posted it all over Facebook that I had been unfaithful to my team. Now, I would like to say this is not true at all. I, their mediocre attempt to, to help to cause me or to kind of push me to be unfaithful to my team, it did not work. And I'm happy to say that I am still a faithful and loyal supporter to the Waikato Chiefs. Now I know today that there's people watching today and you know what it is like to have that loyalty broken or, or you've experienced firsthand the pain when faithfulness to you or something is destroyed. See, for some here, faithfulness reminds you of nothing more than pain and disappointment of, of that hurt and that trust being shattered. And I wanna tell you today that God has been, is being, and will continue to be faithful to you. Over and over again, we learn that when God says He will do something, He does it even when it seems impossible. When God says something will happen, it happens. This is true for the past, for your present, and for your future. We, we see in 1 Kings verse eight, chapter 8, verse 56, that not one word has failed of all of the good promises He gave. God is eternal. He is reliable. He is steadfast. He is unwavering in His faithfulness because that is one of His characteristics. And I wanna remind you today that wherever you're watching this message from, that God is faithful to you. He will always be faithful to you. He will always do what He promised that He would do. See, I imagine that you're like me and there's times where you question 
question, is God really going to do what he said? 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 24, the one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. See, the one who you place your hope in, in Jesus Christ, like an anchor for our soul, will be faithful to you. He will be loyal to you. He has great love for you. There's an amazing, sing, amazing hymn that says this, Great is your faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changes not, thy compassions will fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. See, this hope, it reminds me of God's great love and it reminds me of God's great faithfulness. Third and final thing is this, that hope reminds me that Jesus is already there. Hebrews 6 verse 19, it tells us this, that this hope is strong and a trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. Verse 20, because Jesus has already gone in there for us. The reason that we can have confidence to know that strength and that trustworthiness of the anchor of Jesus Christ is that He has already gone there for us. Jesus went there on the cross for us. He, he went there and paid our debt once and for all. Uh, Jesus went through the curtain for us to, so that we may have access into God's very presence. And Jesus Christ is there now and one day we will spend eternity with, with Him. This hope is like an anchor for our soul and it's only found in Jesus Christ. Do you know this hope? The hope that only Jesus Christ gives. My dad was my hero. And how he lived his life, it, it, it showed me that, that he was anchored in Jesus Christ. He, he showed me what it is to have hope in Jesus Christ. But on July 23rd, 2018, I was standing beside my dad as he breathed his very last breath. I stood beside him as he, as he kind of or become unconscious for the few days before. And, and in those few moments of what we now know was his last breath, he opened his eyes and he said, he's here. I can see him. Right then, at there, <laughs> that moment in that hospital room, I could see in his eyes the hope that he had carried all his life that was now becoming reality. That day had arrived, no matter how much we, we prayed for, that it wouldn't come, it come. And that day had arrived was the time for him to go and spend his eternity with his Lord and his Saviour. I've always wondered, I've always wondered what, what people mean when they say that, oh, they went to be with the Lord, that that person went to be with the Lord. And, and I, I think this from, from what I saw in my father's eyes that day was that his Lord and Saviour come to get him and to take him home. You see, Jesus was already there. And, and in that moment, it was the confidence that he had in Jesus that held him firm, that held him strong. It was an anchor for his soul that Jesus was there waiting for him, that he was coming to get him. See, no one ever will be able to convince me uh, since that experience that heaven is not real because the anchor of his soul that I saw and that I held in my father's eyes is going to stay with me for the rest of my life as Jesus took him by the hand and led him home. See that hope that he had held on to for his whole life through, through his family breakup as a child and through health issues and circumstances throughout his whole life, the hope that he was anchored in was Jesus Christ was now becoming his reward. Even in his very final moments, he left me a legacy of what it is to have been anchored and have hope in the person of Jesus Christ.
See, what Jesus accomplished for you and I gives us hope. The truth is Jesus is the hope of the world. Hope in Jesus is an anchor that is strong, that is trustworthy, and that you can place all your confidence in. Maybe you're watching today and and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and as your Saviour. Perhaps you might say, Daryl, well, my life is far away from Him. And uh, you might say, Daryl, what what is this good news? What is this anchor that we find in Jesus Christ? Well, it starts with this. It starts with that invitation of inviting Jesus to come into your life and be your Lord and Saviour. Here's the good news that God sent His one and only Son to this earth for you and for me. Because we had a debt to be paid. It was this thing called sin and it separated us from God. But God loved you so much that He sent His Son, Jesus, to take upon Himself your sin and my sin, our stuff, our mess upon His own very body to be nailed to a cross and to die and have His blood shed, His body broken for you and for me. That we may know freedom that we may know the hope in Jesus Christ, that we may be able to be, have no separation between ourselves and God. The truth is that God loves you and He made you, that He has a great plan for your life, but we all sin, we all mess up. And that's what separates us from God. So this morning, I'd love to give an opportunity for anyone here today uh, who would like to say yes to Jesus. So right now, I'm gonna pray a real simple prayer. And if that's you today, if you wanna step over a line, if you wanna give your life to Jesus, to surrender your life, to place your hope in Him right now, can I invite you to pray this simple prayer after me in your room, in your house, wherever you are right now. Pray this, pray, God, today, I surrender my life to you. I know of sin, but I believe Jesus, you died for me. I turn from my old life and I turn to you. Come in and be the Lord of my life. Make me brand new today. I choose from this day to live my life for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Right now, there's going to be a link and a button pop up on your screen. And, and if you prayed that prayer, you really meant it and saying yes to Jesus or Jesus count me. And today I'd love it for you to click that button. We would love to support you and pray for you and help you resource you in your next steps in your journey of saying yes to Jesus. I am so proud of you today that you've decided to say yes to Jesus and therefore making Him the anchor of your soul. Bless you, everybody.